Good morning, equippers, or afternoon or evening, whenever you have the chance to watch this video. Say for our July meeting of the equippers, I thought it'd be better to do something through email and a video than trying to get together because I know a lot of you are out of town. Uh, and so I hope that you all get the chance and take the chance to watch this uh, video and then to interact a little bit through um, email response. But this morning, I want to talk about making and breaking habits. I think it was all the way back to Aristotle before Christ, uh, one of the first people to, to connect the power of habit with our character. And essentially, Aristotle said, you know, our character is simply the sum of all the habits that we've developed. Well, as a Jesus follower, I want to change my character. I want my character to reflect more of Jesus' character in 2022 than it does today in 2021. That's, that's my goal, and that's really a primary goal of my life. Um, I want every day, every week, and every year to reflect more of God's grace and God's truth than it does today. And as a disciple maker, as an equipper, I want to help others to change their character. You know, for each one of you and for those that you minister to and the those who walk into the doors of our church and those who are our neighbors in the church community, in my personal community, I want every person that I have just a little bit of influence on, I want to help motivate and give practical skills and encouragement to changing their character so they become closer to accepting Jesus or better at following Jesus. And so that means working on our habits because our habits determine our character. And sometimes it means um, adding a new habit. Uh, for instance, with a new believer, we'll have to help them uh, develop the habit of daily devotions. Uh, starting every day or ending every day or having a time out during the day uh, when they spend some time in scripture and prayer and being very conscious of God's desire for them. Uh, for others that I've worked with, especially when I was uh, working with college students, it often meant uh, helping people learn how to get to work on time. It, it's a habit that some people have and some people don't. And as I work with people, uh, there's been many times when I've had to help people develop the habit of getting to work or getting to class on time. Sometimes we change our character by getting rid of a bad habit, uh, making or breaking, making a good habit a new good habit or breaking an old bad habit. Uh, for instance, um, I, I know some people who've I've had to challenge to uh, not spend so much time in their online games. Um, being online and having games is fine, but there's some people who just had the habit that that's how they spent all their free time. There's been other people uh, that I've had to work with to say, you know, um, you're speaking disrespectfully to your spouse, which is a nice way of saying it. Uh, you're yelling at them, you're calling them bad names, you're downgrading uh, their, their sense of self-worth. You just, you can't do that. That's a habit that needs to get um, part of your past and not part of your present or your future. So how do we do that? How do we help people make or break habits? And there's lots I could say, and, and at the end, I hope that there's more that, that you say in our online an email discussion, but here's just a couple things. And the first is from Ephesians 4. Uh, in Ephesians 4, uh, Paul talks about the power of substitution, uh, that you take um, the, the bad habit and you can really get rid of it a whole lot easier if you focus on also developing the good habit that basically replaces it. Uh, let's look at this in Ephesians 4, uh, beginning with verse 21. Uh, verse 22. Uh, you were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, and to be made new in the attitude of your minds, and uh, to put on the new self. And so you put off the old self, you put on the new self. It's a picture from clothing. In the morning, we take off the clothes that we wore during the night, and we put on new clothes. And and it's uh, you do both. You take the old ones off and you put the new ones on. And then Paul goes on to say, you know, this is a, a good picture of what it means 
uh, to really be effective in putting a bad habit in the past. It doesn't come just because we say, I'm not going to do that anymore, but it comes as we substitute something that's better and healthier and more like Jesus in its place. And so we can look down to verse 25. He says, therefore, each of you must put off falsehood. The put off is the taking off, the stopping of something. You must put off the falsehood and put on speaking truthfully to your neighbor, for we are all members of one body. So if we want to get to a place or help a friend uh, get to a place where they're, they're no longer uh, deceitful and shading the truth and kind of uh, making things look better for themselves and worse for others, there's two things we need to work on. That is, we stop saying uh, the false things, but also, also we develop um, a passion and a habit of speaking truthfully to our neighbors. In other words, it's not just stopping something um, but it's moving on to say, you know, I have a commitment to being uh, vulnerable, to being open, to being honest, to, to disclose all the truth that I know to my neighbor. And as I find as I develop a habit of speaking truthfully to my neighbors, I actually develop better relationships and have more joy in my interaction with other people. I put off falsehood, I put on speaking truthfully and honestly and openly to my neighbor. Uh, substitution. Uh, verse 26, in your anger, do not sin. So there's a sinful form of anger, and we want to get rid of that sinful form of anger. And how do we do that? Well, by not letting the sun go down while you're still angry. And the implication seems to be here that one of the things that moves sin from anger from just being an emotion that waves over us, that washes over us, it becomes sinful when we tend to harbor it and we tend to nurture it and we tend to uh, enjoy its presence for more than a few hours. And, and the Apostle Paul says, you know, the Holy Spirit's revealing to us that um, we can't stop anger altogether, but we can work quickly to resolve our differences. And in fact, he puts a deadline. He says, you know, um, when you find that you're angry and you're having a difference of opinion or even stronger than that, just a flat out um, a fit of anger towards someone, you know, don't go to bed that night until you found a way to resolve that situation. So sinful anger, we put off. We put on the desire to resolve our differences and to do so quickly and promptly. Well, one more example here in Ephesians 4. Um, it, it's the most startling. Verse 28, anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer. Well, yeah, duh, you know, don't steal. Um, anyone who's been stealing must steal no longer. So we get rid of stealing. How do we do that? Well, by saying, I'm going to be a person that works. They must work doing something useful with their own hands so that they have something to share with those in need. And so a person that's a thief a stealer, a person that takes things that don't doesn't belong to them, they really move beyond that only when they move into being a person that works so they can take care of themselves. But more than that, they work with an idea of saying, you know, if God really blesses me, he'll give me something so that I can share with others. And rather than being a taker, I've really moved past that thiefdom, that stealing, when I become a giver. I found as I work with people in, in counseling and equipping and disciple making, uh, that if I just ask God, you know, what is it in this person's life that's really at the core of what they need to change? And then what is it that we can do in the substitution? Um, you know, if they want to add a good habit, they have to identify something that they're going to give up in order to get that. Um, and so, you know, developing a habit of daily devotions means that um, I may not be able to read the paper for as much in the morning, which is something that I had to give up. It was tough. Um, but but if I'm to be faithful in my daily devotions, I have to be willing to give that up. So the substitution is not only substituting a good thing for a bad thing, but it's also giving up maybe even a neutral thing in order to have time and energy and thoughts to invest in the good thing. The power of substitution. The other thing, just saying uh, quickly, and then we'll wrap up, and that is uh, that, that part of helping people, including myself and those around me, to uh, make or break habits 
is what I call the, the power of the 21 day intensity. 21 intense days of focus and a commitment. Um, waiting until 21 days are over to, to judge how I'm doing and developing the habit. Because no character changes in a day. And no new habit feels natural or even acceptable in a day. Um, but the things that seem so awkward the first day after 21 days of faithfully practicing, we find that to become almost routine and to become natural. I remember one time uh, I was challenged by a, a speaker that John and I went to listen to for marriage enrichment. And they said, um, men, I know that when you come home, all you want to do is collapse in an easy chair and just zone out for uh, half an hour or an hour or the rest of the day. I go, yeah, <laughs> that's me. I didn't know that was bad. And he said, that's bad. I go, ooh, okay. What should I substitute if it's just zoning out and being private and kind of um, allowing myself a time to rest from a busy work day? If that's not the right thing to do when I come home, what is? And then he really laid it on hard and it made it very tough for me. He said, you know, when you get home in that first hour, your first half hour, your job is to share th three things that you did at work with your wife. Man, I've been put with a lot of hard tasks, but I don't know if there's anyone that seemed tougher or more impossible. And the first couple of days I tried, I made a 21 day commitment. And I told Jan, I said, this is a 21 day commitment because uh, developing a new habit works a lot better when you have an accountability partner. 21 days. Every day I had to, within the first half hour when I got home, I had to share with Jan three things that I had done at work. So unnatural, so awkward, just felt so, ah, so tough. For the first day, second day, third day, about the sixth or seventh day, I started thinking, oh, you know, this might not be so bad. And, and I found somewhere, oh, I don't know, day 28, 29, I'm doing this, it's automatic. When I come in, I get a glass of water, I sit down in my lazy boy, and I automatically say, hmm, Jan, here's something that happened to me today. Well, I don't know that I still do that every day. It's certainly my goal is, uh, and I found that it did exactly what I wanted it to do, is it helped Jan and me develop and uh, move forward in our relationship to each other. Well, there's a couple kinds of follow-up. Um, I want to continue this discussion, and this will be the toughest thing for us to do, but um, give it a try and see if you can make it work. And that is just responding to the email, which this video is, uh, responding to the email with one or two things. Um, maybe you want to help uh, develop a list of habits that need to be broken or habits that need to be made. You know, I mentioned a couple. For instance, a good habit is uh, developing daily devotions. Uh, let's see maybe if we can develop um, a list among ourselves of 10 or 15 good habits that we ought to be looking for and helping those around us develop. And also feel, feel free to say, you know, here's some bad habits that I've encountered that um, I've challenged myself to get past, but especially the good habits. Uh, so that's one thing to do is, is a list of bad and good habits, mostly focused on the good um, and then the second thing is, what have you discovered as you've worked in your own life and helped others uh, come to maturity in Christ? Uh, what are some of the things that, that you've noticed are particularly effective ways of breaking habits or making habits? Is there some tool, some perspective, some Bible verse, um, a, a, a manner of prayer, uh, just a, a practical step that you take as you walk with someone and give them encouragement uh, to move into developing a new habit or breaking an old habit. You know, this is the stuff of nitty gritty for me. Um, it, it's, it's tough. It's not something that I work on every day, but in my mind, I know it as for myself and for those I minister to, as I develop new habits and get rid of the bad ones, that I'm gradually but surely becoming more like Jesus, which as I said, that's my overall life goal. Well, bless you all, wherever you are, whether you're here in Eugene or on the other side of the country or the other side of the world. Um, may God bless you. Look forward to the opportunities we have to connect one-on-one -on -one and just catch up with each other and be a blessing to each other. 
And uh, if you'd go ahead and give me some kind of response on the email so we can kind of further a little bit more discussion, um, that would be the icing on the cake with me. But until then, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and pour his grace into your life and through your life to others. Thank you, Jesus, for all the ways that you do exceedingly abundantly beyond all that we ask or imagine. In the name of him who builds the church, we pray. Amen.